Jan Markell is a, a woman of God, loves the Lord, loves the word, and is known throughout her Christian history of uh, her Christian witness and all of being one that holds the line. She has an interesting calling from the Lord to the church. Uh, she monitors ministries. She, she monitors events and, and church movements, church uh, trends. And she is a, a church treasure, uh, very unique. I refer to her as our Deborah in the body of Christ today. There, I t I'll tell you what, if you, if you know people who, uh, who are in ministries who don't like her, it's probably because she has exposed them. Uh, she's a no-nonsense uh, Christian sister, and uh, we're grateful. She hosts the largest Bible prophecy conference annually in, the, uh, in North America, in Minneapolis area, Eden Prairie specifically. Uh, it is, I call it the Super Bowl of Bible prophecy uh, events. There's nothing like it. Uh, but she is on it. She, has her, she spends her life analyzing what's going on uh, in regards to the church and the word of God. So I'm gonna ask all of you to stand and give a warm welcome to Jan Markell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a seat. Okay, so just for the record, you guys, this is the headlines in the, for the last four days. So when I say headlines, I'm talking about things that could easily, if not directly, relate to scripture um, or possibly Bible prophecy. Jan has her list, and because Jan is here, we want to make sure that she uh, speaks to us the way that only Jan can. And she's also going to touch on some things which I'm so grateful for. So don't leave too, don't leave. <laughs> because she's going to mention some things that unscripted, you know, without plan. Uh, Sundays we are going through right now, 2 Peter chapter 2 about false prophecies, false prophets and false teachers. And Jan's going to talk to us tonight about some things that are going on uh, in the body of Christ that are indeed false, but very popular. Oh, the false is always popular. Always. Yeah. Yeah. And you've been covering it. I mean, no hell, Rob Bell. Wow. You know what I found out today? I, I found out today uh, that Rob Bell, how many of you here on Sunday? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was saddened today to find out that he has a disciple. He has a famous follower, a man who used to be very grounded and now who is a, is a, a bell ringer, a Rob Bell man, is um, Rodgers, the quarterback on the Packers. What's his name? Aaron Rodgers got swept away by... Mm -hmm. Rob Bell, That's, that really bummed me out. Well, um, I, I, I wish I would have known that before the game. Rob Bell week. is dangerous, and I'm glad you yeah, are talking, yeah. talking about him. It was a shocking video, I'd actually seen it, but you know, interesting that it took a secular journalist, Martin Bashir, That's right. to do the expose and to call him out and say, what on earth are you doing, right. Mr. Bell, with, with the theme of your, you're saying everybody goes, this is not a believer, Martin Bashir. No, not that I know, not that I'm aware of. Jen, you have a list I'm, I'm spying on your, you wanna start? What's at the top of your list? Well, I mean, Saturday I'm gonna be talking about some of the prominent signs of the times. The problem is they change every 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I think, you know, I think you're on to one of the biggest ones, which is, uh, the lurch left in the church, the apostasy in the church, the, uh, uh, the fact that p uh, churches are no longer giving heed to sound doctrine, and that is heartbreaking. Predicted, I'm not sure there's anything mm. more predicted in the Bible than that there would be an end time apostasy. Verse after verse after verse after verse. They won't give heed to sound doctrine, they'll give 
he defables, um, just one after another after another. So when we see it happen, why are we surprised? I heard somebody on Sunday make mention of the fact that they were aware of a church somewhere, Midwest, or it was a small community. But the, uh, the population of the church had a particular view. A pastor came into, a new pastor came into town, and uh, that particular view that they had was definitely not a healthy biblical view. Mm -hmm. And they actually coerced that pastor to publicly endorse their view, even though he understood it to be against scripture. Oh. So here you are not only talking about apostasy, but now we've got, now we've got uh, a church that is fallen away that uh, is pulling young ministers away. Um, and that's, that's very, very sad. But so I, I well, wanna be faithful to your, to your well, schedule. Well, I'm just gonna stay in this genre for, for a moment or two. And I, and I think there is, in 2019, some really significant things in a sad way certainly happened. We, we um, saw Christianity Today, which is, I think we should call it Christianity Astray, um, You're talking about the magazine? The, the magazine, the, the magazine. And I mean, came out hammering uh, Donald Trump, telling him to step down, which I, I, it was just shocking when that happened. 200 uh, evangelical leaders, thank you. Yeah, 200 evangelical leaders obviously uh, stepped in and said, you know, this is, this is not right. Um, gosh, we've had critical race theory. I mean, and that's coming out of the Southern Baptist Convention, yeah. suggesting that... Um, we're, we're racist, et cetera. I mean, oh. look, I have done a study on, on the history of the evangelical movement, modern times, starting with the National Association, Association of Evangelicals. They came into being somewhere in the 40s to be a counter to the um, National Council of Churches. Mm. And in the, my understanding is in the 40s, this National Association of Evangelicals was solid as can be in standing for truth. And then all of a sudden, in the 90s, in the early 2000s, they started going so haywire. It's it just, it's hard. I mean, some 15 years ago, they're, they're big, uh, global warming. Look, uh, I'm president of Minnesotans for Global Warming Foundation, okay? I wish it were true. Wish it were true because I come from Minneapolis, but, but why, why are evangelicals, what is this gonna have to do with soul winning is all I'm saying. Well, listen, you know, if you don't know, you know, she mentions this argument of, of uh, climate change or global warming. You say, well, who cares, who cares? What, what does that relate to the Bible? I would put that right there in the area of R Romans chapter one. Yes. Because, um, it's, first, first of all, it's having no faith in God that he can take care of the planet. And it's about us saving the planet to the point where those who are rabid about that idea actually are very excited about s catastrophes that lower human population on earth. They That's want right. humans to die. That's right. Because a smaller human footprint is better for mother earth. And if you want to know where that's coming from, the spirit of it, you'll find it in Romans chapter one. They worshiped and served the creator, creator. or the, the, creation, the, creation, the creation, rather than the creator and who is blessed what's going forever. On. That's what's going on. And Remarkable. I wonder if this is going to fill, if this isn't going to be a part of the coming one world religion. I'm going to talk about this on Saturday, which I, I think all the tickets are sold, but you can watch it on his channel. But I, I'm just wondering if all of this is part of the coming one world religion, why, why would Greta Thunberg, the 17 year old from Sweden, the truant. Who's, who's, who's declared the successor to Jesus Christ, that would be uh, image number three that I, I have, uh, declared Times Person of the Year, why not a president, why not a prime minister, but here out of seven billion people, this is Times Person of the Year, because she's again crying the sky is falling and the temperatures are rising and we only have 10 years left and we need a green new deal. And listen, during the tribulation, we're gonna have a brown new deal. It's kind of a sad situation, it really is. 
Um, but why is someone like this celebrated? And I think this is the strong delusion of our time when this is the, as Jack said, they're gonna worship the creation more than the creator, and that's exactly what's going on. And I think this fits into the coming one world religion. I'll get into that a little bit more on Saturday, but the coming global system, one world system, needs a crisis. It needs a crisis. We know it's the rapture. That's going to be the crisis. But before that, I believe it's this environmentalism. And let's be sewers of creation, okay? Nobody's saying we shouldn't care for right. creation. That's in Genesis, and we need to care for creation. Right. But when we have it going to this extreme, then I think this is, could be a part of the coming one world, world religion. And keep your eye on it, and it's part of the global agenda, is the crisis needed for one world is going to say, this will happen mm -hmm. if we don't have a one world system. That's what I think. Yeah, well, it's interesting because, um, again, it goes to, it goes to the, the religious system, systems that are anti-Christ in spirit, but earth-related, man-deifying, or as we'll know from scripture, earth-deifying, and just missing the mark completely, missing God uh, in all of that. Um, and, you know, it's very sad, too, because this... Greta Thornburg, she's being just exalted in the world, and um, she's, how long has she been, how long, she's been ditching, she's ditched school for two years? Yeah. Right, she hasn't gone to school in two years. That's why, she, that's why she's called the truant. Did you know that? That's her, and she's, and so, and kids want to be like her now. Mm -hmm. well, I don't need to go to school, I need to be like the time person of the year. <laughs> okay, yeah. but, um, uh, God rejection, you, you have this, um, or did we already pass that? God no, rejection, well, strong delusion? Yeah, well, I, I, I think, and I'll talk a little bit more too about that on Saturday, but, but this... But this they're, not gonna be, they're not going to be there on well, Saturday. They can watch it online, and they can watch it on, they, they, can, they can watch it on YouTube later. But, yeah, ha, but Jack, have you ever seen, have you ever seen the, the strong delusion, I mean, we love socialism now, um, have you ever seen deleting God? I mean, I've got a shocking clip, I don't have it with me, but a shocking clip of how God has just deleted, first from Europe and the other parts of the world, but now America. In, in 2 Thessalonians, the Bible says regarding the, as we approach or get deeper into the, the, the times of the end, it says that when, when there's a temple built, well, it doesn't say when a temple's built in Jerusalem, all of a sudden the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 2, out of nowhere, the Bible lets us in on something that hasn't happened yet. So listen, get, I, wanna, I want your attention. There is no temple in Jerusalem right now. All of a sudden, 2 Thessalonians 2 mentions a temple in Jerusalem in the future, and a man shows up called the Antichrist, and he's going to declare himself to be God, and the scriptures tell us that God, God is going to send those who dwell on earth at that time, That's strong delusions right, so that they right. will believe the lie. Has the definite article in front of lie. It's not a lie. There is a specific lie that is coming that unless God is protecting you, you're gonna fall for it. Now the amazing thing is, we're not even there yet. There is no That's temple right. in Jerusalem. There's talk about it. All the, all the artifacts for it are, pre, are made. They have the blueprints for it. Everything's ready to go. They just don't have the thumbs up for it. What's interesting to me is we're not there yet, but we're seeing people already embrace strong delusions. Strong delusions. Things that make no sense. Can I, let me insert something very fast. Please. My wife says, don't talk so much when Jan's here. <laughs> I want to hear from Jan. <laughs> I'll give you a strong delusion. Um, black unemployment. 50 or 60 year low, black unemployment. Can somebody say amen? amen. Mm. Black unemployment. Hispanic unemployment, all time low. Uh, female workplace employment, high, all time high. Stock market, right, all time high. 
more millionaires are being produced right now that invest or that work hard than any other time in American history right now. More people are gaining wealth. More companies are being established. It's over, it's the record, it's, it's over, it's over the top. You want to talk about strong delusion? Right now we have a, we have a lawsuit. It's a joke. People want to call it impeachment. I refuse to call it impeachment because it's not a real impeachment. Everything that the law requires for an impeachment to take place hasn't been met. So everybody's playing along. It's actually a total joke. But why? Why? What's going on? Don't you, this is a, a smidgen of, of strong delusion. Don't you think that everyone should be so glad that black unemployment is at an all-time low? Don't you think all of us should be happy that people are making more money? Aren't, don't you think everyone should be happy, ha- be happy that uh, job creation and company creation We've never seen it like this before. Don't you think we would all be glad about it regardless of your party affiliation? No. But you see, Jack, when folks, when, when they start marginalizing God, he gives them over to the Romans. Reprobate the reprobate mind, mind. And we have reprobate mind thinking going on. It's absolutely amazing to me. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. so this, is, this, is, this is just huge. And, and that's why some, some need to stand for truth. And, yes. And, uh, and thank you for doing so. Yes. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. yeah, no, that's, that's um, but I'm just, I'm just, cons- that strong delusion right now, I mean, up is down, black is white, good is evil. I mean, everything is upside down. It's an Alice in Wonderland world that is, I never thought I'd see the day that I'm seeing day after day after day. It's not just once a week, it's like once an hour. I just, <laughs> I'm shocked. I'm shocked out of my mind sometimes that things are, what stories that are breaking on the news, situations that are uh, mushrooming before our eyes. I mean, it's, it's staggering. I mean, I mean, we got to the Middle East, which is in constant turmoil. I mean, we haven't even gotten to, Jews and Christians are on the run everywhere on the planet. I mean, this is what's going on in, uh, uh, Christian persecution is just staggering. Um, right. What's going on in, in uh, with with the Jews on the run? That they've got a clip of picture number um, four. End time Jews. Uh, are they? Uh, yeah. Yep. Look, and the yeah, end of Jewish huge. presence in Europe? Question mark. Now that's actually kind of a good thing because then they're going to go back to Israel. Going, that's what God wants them to do, is to go back to Israel so yeah, that is his, his end time plan can, can really come into play. I mean, and then, then he steps in to start dealing with them, but they need to be in Israel. Yeah, for those of you who are not familiar with your Bible, the Bible tells us that prior to the physical return of Jesus to his land, he will call the he, the spirit of God, will call his people from all the nations of the world back into their own land. It doesn't tell us how he calls them. Isaiah, you can look at Isaiah um, 43. I think the first 11 verses help. But here we have this, look, France. uh, France responded too late to, too late, just too late to the fact that uh, the Muslim population in France began to attack the Jews. And France did nothing about it. And so what happened was the Jews, they have a history understanding, whoop, we remember this happening in in Germany and in Europe. And so they packed up and they moved to Israel in these last few years. And the Jewish uh, evacuation out of France has really tampered with their economy. All because they couldn't stand up, they refused to stand up. But Jews, this rise of anti-Semitism is going on around the world. It's increasing in the United States, which is very alarming, uh, to where now the president had to issue an executive order. I don't know if you're aware of this. Yes, that was... Because of persecution against Jews in the United States, uh, President Trump issued an executive order uh, to protect the Jews. Did you know that? Uh, that's how bad it's getting. And so the, the thing is, but it's driving Jews back to their home that they'd never been to before. Again, all of this in preparation for exactly what the Bible had said would happen. But it is a demonic spirit. Uh, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, Israel, a Jew, Jewish, 
And it's remarkable the reaction you get from people uh, because that, that race of people, the most persecuted race on earth throughout history, uh, genders a demonic it does. reaction. It, it does. I mean, it's happening in New York City and other parts of America at a level that was expected, but um, I don't, I mean, the brutality is quite stunning and it's only going to get worse. And again, this is, it's happening for a reason and God is allowing it to happen. You know, the American Jew, uh, by and large, now, not the more religious Jewish people, you have the conservative and then you've got the Orthodox Jews and the Orthodox Jews, I mean, they, they truly do follow the Bible, not our Bible, but you know, what we would call the Old Testament. Um, but anyway, uh, I think they are aghast at what's happening, I really do. And I think slowly their eyes are getting open that they have only one, they have only one safe place to go to, and God's prepared it for them. This is the miracle of the miracle of not just the 20th century when it came into being. It's the miracle of all time. You know what Mark Twain said about that country back in 1860? Yeah, he, 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 he said this is a total wasteland, completely gone. It's completely well, when he wasteland. went through it, it was. When Mark was. Twain it, walked yeah. through Israel, uh, he, he comments that he couldn't find a tree. Exactly. And um, that's because of of the Islamic, Islamic taxation of trees on a, on a resident, so people cut down the trees so they wouldn't have to pay taxes to the uh, Islamic empire. No, it's true, it's amazing. But, uh, but look how it's come back to life. It's the miracle of, of all time. It is. Uh, here's a headline, it's number three, you guys, if you want to put it up, uh, just to get things going here. Trump fires back after Iranian leader condemns him on Twitter. Trump fires back and says, make Iran great again. <laughs> uh, and that kind of, um, now look, this, this is something where along the, the issue with Iran, because it's in the news, it's, you guys hear about it every time Don and I get together, but um, it's number, uh, take number two, you guys, is former Iranian crown prince says Tehran, which is the capital of Iran, regime on the brink of collapse. That may or may not be true, the reason why Jan and I take issue with this, it may be true on the short term, you guys, but we know that from the Ezekiel uh, description, which you guys hear about every month, you're probably getting tired of hearing about it, but every month there's more news uh, that is formulating regarding possible fulfillment of Isaiah 30, or Ezekiel 38, is um, they may have a collapse and maybe it will be a momentary reprieve, kind of like what we're having right now. Right, in, in America. Uh, because... Maybe, maybe God is going to just get the gospel out to a lot of Persians if that regime collapses. But we know this, that even if the regime collapses and they have a honeymoon season for a while, it won't be long-lived because we know that from Scripture, Iran, Persia, uh, is going to join ranks and must join ranks with Russia. You guys are very well uh, in tune with that. And then, Jan, this one, and I'll let you, I'll let you comment on these. <laughs> you, you know that something good must be happening with policy coming out of the United States when, in slide number one, Iranian uh, parliamentary member, yeah. a government leader, announces a $3 million reward for whoever kills Donald Trump. Well, this is serious. This is very, very serious. This is very, very serious. It also tells you uh, that these few that control the Iranian people, they don't like what the influence of your nation has been having on Iran. That's right. Because the young people in Iran are rising up because they want freedom. <coughs> they want liberty. And, um, and they, some of them want the gospel, by the way, very badly. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of rumors about the gospel exploding. You're not supposed to hear about it. Absolutely. Exploding in Iran. Exploding in Iran. Iran. Yes. Um, I don't remember where I read this, but China, for a long time, China was the fastest growing, Christ, uh, fastest growing nation on earth regarding Christianity. China! The church, fastest growing. And then I've heard recently that in the last couple of years that 
it may be that Iran yes. is the fastest growing uh, Christian nation on earth. Not Christian nation. It's the fastest growing... Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Well, Christianity Christi is, is, is bursting in, in Iran, but then the mullahs won't let it happen. Right. So, but if the mullahs were taken out of the way, that could be wow. the fastest growing Christian population. Could you imagine? Certainly in that part of the world. Another headline I saw, uh, Jack, is uh, Vladimir Putin being called the king of the Middle East. You don't have that one there, but, no, but Putin being called king of the Middle East. Get this leaps out of the Bible. Leaps out of the Bible. Why? I hope but that's Jan, exciting. But Jan, you know? why? Why does, how? Ex well, explain I think, explain I think, to someone who, who's not familiar. Yeah, I th I mean, he could be, and it's a speculation, so you better to be careful. Um, he, if he isn't Gog, that's G-O-G, -G, if he isn't Gog, he's certainly Gog-esque. He he's, he's fills the bill for, for being a potential representative of Gog from the land of Magog. And when, he start, when the world is called, the secular world is calling him the king of the Middle East, I, I mean, I think that's huge. I really do. It's amazing. Regarding Vladimir Putin, it says uh, Russia's rise on the global stage, Moscow. Vladimir Putin's efforts to reassert Moscow's global influence appears to be bearing some fruit. But 20 years after he first assumed the Russian presidency, 20 years ago, his efforts to revitalize the country's economic, uh, economy have languished. Believe it or not, that sounds like a very benign observation or comment by this writer, Thomas Grove. That's a very telling, serious issue. Their economy is languishing. He's been in power a long time. Of course, if he gave his $80 billion yes, that he has into the economy. he's the wealthiest man on earth. He's the well, it's, he's, his wealth is estimated at $80 billion, but his, his illegal holdings, uh, which are more vague, surpass that of Jeff Bezos, which I think Bezos is at, what is he at now today? $125 billion, something like this. Vladimir Putin, um, when, when your economy is languishing, you, you don't want to hear this, but when your economy is languishing, you need a war. A war will always help your economy. But he's, it, and he's in Syria. So. Well, you're, you're getting it, exactly. Here, Russia needs to get into, get into, he needs to stimulate his economy. Yeah. And so uh, this is a very critical thing because I grew up in a home where my dad, who was a Marine, farm boy from South Dakota, uh, red, white, and blue, uh, the, whole thing, the whole thing my dad would always say about Russia was, you never want to tangle with a wounded bear. Mm -hmm. Russia the bear, right? You never want to tangle with a wounded bear. The bear's economy is languishing. That's right. It cannot last much longer. Something has to happen. And one of those somethings might be slide number five, you guys. The rift between Turkey and America has paved the way for Russia's rebound. This is very stimulating because, uh, again, the, you've heard it from Don and I over and over again. Ezekiel chapter 38 tells us that the house of Togomar, Turkey, will uh, coalesce with Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and its leader will be uh, the, uh, Gog. She mentioned G-O-G. -G. Uh, this could be, this, this could be a harbinger of what's coming. Some would say, I know some people who would say, this is it. I don't want to do that to you guys. I want to play it careful, but this is remarkable because Russia, you said they're all over the place, they're not only well inserted in the Middle East, right now there's a little bit vying for power. You guys, that's going on. We gotta be careful because Trump is committed to not getting involved in another Middle East war. But just the other day, when was this? Just the other day, yes, today's the 22nd? Yes. Yesterday. Standoff, US troops block Russian forces from capturing Syrian oil fields. Field. Wow, so Russia in Syria. Right, Russia now. Russia in Syria. That's uh, right to the northern north of. Where else is Russia? What else did we find out about? Where's Russia uh, on the North American or North African uh, Mediterranean now? Well, I think we need to keep our eyes on Libya. That's I really right. do. I mean, 
previous administration uh, made some gross, gross mistakes with Libya, and now with ISIS now in Libya, um, you know, is that going to be the next um, scene where, is that going to be the next Syria? It could be. And there is a, um, I don't know if I have it here, there is an article where Russia and Turkey are flooding Libya with soldiers yes. and military equipment, which yeah. is amazing. Yeah. So there's a big vine, big vine for power in the region. Um, I think you guys know, if I were to ask you, what's driving, what's driving Turkey and Russia? Why don't they just stay home? What's driving them into the area? Is that they like, is that they like the desert sun? <laughs> is it their tan that they can get there? Do they like to fish in the Mediterranean? Uh, no, it's oil. It's oil and natural resources. And so uh, what's going on? This thing that's in the news right now, Jan, is very, very, uh, I don't want to say scary. That's, we're not scared as believers. It's very, um, well, it's the situation where Israel Israel now with, with Cyprus and Greece to Europe is selling and going yeah. to be selling more and more uh, natural gas. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, and Turkey's furious. And so now Turkey's sending its uh, exploration oil platforms into areas that they are declaring as their area. And countries like Cyprus are saying, wait a minute, excuse me, this is our backyard. What are you doing here? And Turkey, this is happening now. The ship, the research uh, vessel to extract oil, it's sailing as we're talking right now. And the Russians are supplying military cover for them. Should Israel or anyone else do anything about it? So they are like invading areas of natural resources. And Russia's got Turkey's back as Turkey expands and parks off the coast of this area in the, in the Mediterranean. Why? To compete with Israel in the booty, the spoils, the oil, and, the, and the, the gems, as it were, natural gas and all that's there. This is a very volatile moment uh, right there. But Jen, what, what can you, or what would you like to say regarding? Well, I think we should talk a little bit about this, this coin here, this coin right here, oh. I think. This was given to you today. Um, how often do you see? Uh, I have nails and you don't. I so, don't have nails. So, um, want to turn upside down? <laughs> Simple. Okay. Um, you want to explain what this is? This is um, on this side. Is this is not a joke, by the no, way? No, I, it's I, not. And I, we may have. Yeah. This is right here. The. the Shekel. So, and on the back, by the way, what I think even is significant as what's on the front, Trump being compared to Cyrus you know, by the Israelis, but on the back is the temple. And if we got into a discussion here on the plans to build the third temple, and no, don't start, don't send donations to build the third temple. Please don't do that. But that's on the back of this coin, as you can see um, right here. Israel honoring a U.S. president, quite like this. This is yours, Jack. Let me, um, so, okay, first of all, everybody, this is not a joke. This is, this is uh, done by, sanctioned by the Israeli government. This is not some souvenir guy down no. on, on Ben Yehuda Street. <laughs> this, is the, this is the real thing. And you say, well, that's ridiculous, that, that's, that's crazy. Listen, I understand any and all reactions to this. Here's my point. It, it doesn't matter what my reaction is to this or yours. It's their reaction to it. Right. Their reaction. They see the, the commitment that this president has made to them, and it has inspired them. You may or may not like that. It's irrelevant. It's already happened. And again, this is, not a, this is not plastic and it's not a joke. It's a sanctioned government issue, a commemorative piece that they decided. This guy reminds us of Cyrus. Yeah. Israel says this. 
And where this is going to go, it's interesting. I, I'm looking, is that, I guess I could look on here or I might need glasses. I definitely, you guys, to the underneath on the left, the temple coin it says. Is that Isaiah 60 verse what? Eight. eight. Isaiah 60 verse eight. So they're saying, so they must be referencing that as a, as a motion of peace. Very interesting. Here's the point. It's, it's, it's their view, it's their, it's their recognition. Uh, what future role does Trump have in Israel? Probably none, who knows, probably none. The point is, he's been that favorable yeah. to them. And, I, and I, which, <laughs> we were talking earlier too about uh, our expectations uh, you know, several years ago were uh, rather low and, and pleasantly surprised to have such a pro-Israel president. Um, we guys, one of the best things that we can do right now, and you've seen the number up there, unless Jan, feel free to interrupt at any moment, but if we could go to Q&A by texting, you guys have been seeing the number, there it is, the number there, and uh, your text uh, will make it up, but Jan, as they're preparing their text and sending their questions, is there anything that you want to uh, touch on before we start taking q and I am concerned about, if we could just throw up uh, clip number six. I am concerned about um, the new Netflix series. Some of you may have seen it. <clears throat> and what is this? This is the new Netflix series called Messiah, which I believe is introducing the Antichrist. And I think another one of the issues I have seen escalate in the last one to five years completely out of control is this rise of wickedness and this rise of an Antichrist spirit. The Antichrist spirit came to the Twin Cities, the heartland, in October when President Trump came to the, uh, the Twin Cities to have just a, a rally and, and thousands and thousands of people from the whole region came just to you know, have a patriotic rally. And Antifa was outside, and you talk about the spirit of Antichrist. It, I mean, it was complete bedlam. And the town, Minneapolis, again, the heartland, was torn apart. So I, I sense the spirit of Antichrist around the world. We could cite 25 cities tonight where there's turmoil, rioting, anarchy, lawlessness. So then Netflix comes out with a series called The Messiah, but I believe it's introducing the Antichrist, but in their version... You mean the, just the mindset of the Antichrist uh, it's, attitude? It's introduced, no, it's introducing a Muslim Messiah, which the Antichrist won't be a Muslim, folks. Just get that out of your mind. Not going to be a Muslim, but Netflix and the producers, who happen to be Roma Downey and Mark Burnett, you'd think they'd know better, have produced it's a series on a Muslim Messiah who's come upon the world to save the world. It's, Has it's, anyone seen this? I've, I've not seen this. Has anyone seen it? It started January 1st. Wow. January 1st. So, I mean, I think this is ominous, to say the least. I mean, now we're glorifying, heralding, announcing, featuring. It's, it's funny to me that how the secular world... An antichrist. World, it's, it's funny to me how the secular world loves to, um, on their terms, yeah. talk about or post issues that are biblical, but they like it their way? They like it their way, and their way, apparently the Antichrist, who's they've got on earth now, happens to be clearly a Muslim, which that's a whole nother topic we're, we don't need to get into, because that's not, the Jews aren't going to, the Jews to, are not, the going, Jews to are not going to accept a Muslim Messiah, no. but anyway, that is not the point. The point is, we now have a TV series heralding the Antichrist as being here, I think that's significant, I really do. Wow. That's never happened before. So this series is not, um, a, this guy's not walking around healing people and raising He's the walking dead. around doing miracles. And, yes. and what's his name? I wouldn't know, I don't know his name, but he, I mean the name, I mean he is named in the series. I haven't seen the series. I'm gonna show huh. the trailer on Saturday at yeah. uh, Proximity. I'm gonna show the trailer, it's about a two minute trailer and it's shocking, it's shocking. I'm not surprised, though, because we talked about it last time about, uh, I think we did, regarding all these action figure hero Marvel comic type yeah. uh, lords and gods and things and de demigods that uh, people, we love that stuff, the supernatural power stuff. And then you introduce God to somebody and they go, no way, there can't be a God. 
And yet you're perpetually yeah. entertained by these godlike creatures on your big silver screen. Yeah. It's very strange. Yeah. Well, keep your eye on that, please. And, and I mean, not, I'm not recommending you watch it, uh, really not, but um, I think we ought to keep our mind, our eye on what the message is because it's saying he's here, he's going to do miracles, <laughs> and he's a good guy. I, um, I should have, I didn't know this was, um, this was given to me just before service. Um, and I appreciate this greatly, and it reminds me, you guys, I have a, I have a, a euro, um, a euro coin. I have several euro coins, but one of them was the introduction of the euro back in 1996. It was uh, from Belgium, and, um, and then I have the, the euros like you may own or have in currency, and uh, the Greek, if you have a Greek euro uh, you should take a look at it because when you turn it around, by the way, all the euros have the exact same thing on one side. And when you turn it around, it has a representation of one of the European Union members. And the, and the Greece one is interesting because this image appears on the Greece coin and it also appeared on the first f launch of the five euro, five dollar, five euro coin uh, from Belgium. 1996, and it has, who thinks of this? It has an, an ocean, uh, the sea, you know the waves? It has waves going across, it has waves, and then it has this big, massive headed bull running over the water, not touching the sea, but running over the sea. Big, massive thing. And on the bull's back right. is, a, is a woman, woman rides the beast. with robes. Yeah. Her robes are flowing behind yeah. the, the bull and over the sea. And uh, he has these great horns. If you've read the book of Revelation, the Bible says that in the end there'll be a false church yes. that rides on the back of the beast. And the beast is this multi-horned thing and she is draped in robes yeah. in the Bible. And you're saying, I saw that in 1996, and I, and I see it every time I look at a Greek euro, and I'm thinking, you gotta be kidding me. It's almost as though somebody read their Bible and did it. Well, they didn't, because in Europe, Europa, in fact, entire Europe, is named after a Greek mythological mm. woman. Her name is Europa. And the beast that she rides is Zeus. And it's very interesting because you've got this, Zeus is the great god, the great god of all the pagan gods, and Europe rides on her back. But the book of Revelation preempted all of that stuff and said, in the end, there's going to be a false system that governs the world. And the, a false church is going to ride that false system. Yeah. You can read about that in Revelation chapters 16, 17, and 18, but pretty remarkable, pretty crazy. It's like, are you, I mean, as Christians, we know the script. We know what's coming. So none of this should surprise us. No, none of it should surprise us. If we could have one more clip, would it be number two? And that would be these three gentlemen, um, Boris Johnson. Boris. Love and, him. and Trump and Netanyahu. And he, here's the thing with these three. And these three global leaders, uh, statesmen, to be honest, here's the thing. They have come against the globalist agenda. Yep. Th these three, Those three have guys. have come against the globalist agenda. Globalism. And one is head of the UK. He wants out of the EU. He doesn't want anything to do with one worldism or even uh, the European Union. Donald Trump has said, I'm... I'm a nationalist, I'm not a globalist, I want anything to do with globalism, and they're trying to throw Bibi Netanyahu out, yep. and he's interested in Israel, not the globalist agenda. So you've got these three powerful leaders, and, and I think that the globalist agenda, and I tell you, and I've got a whole message on that that I, I, I give quite often, I just gave it in uh, San Jacinto, California, but the globalist agenda in the last year, the last five years, just stunning progress. These three men are standing in the way. These three men. Yep. So what's going to happen? I mean, we, so need to, we need to pray for these three men. 
because the globalists would love to take them out, really love to take them out, so that their one world empire can be formed. And they're so standing in the way, it can't happen. Now, I mean, again, we're one election, one U.S. election away, Jack. Literally. One U.S. election away from, well, um, certainly a crisis just goes the wrong way because the globalists, the globalists will then get their grip. And of course, those of us who want the end to come a little bit more quickly, I mean, we say bring it on. <laughs> so it's depending on how you look at it. Yeah, and you, you all need to be uh, encouraged because um, it's all about salvation. It's all about yes. uh, the God who died on the cross for your sins. And for those of you who are not versed in Bible prophecy, the whole reason why we started these happening now is to calm your spirit yes. against all the craziness that's out there. But I understand that if somebody walked into the building right now, you'd think, those two people on the stage are crazy. Globalism and what? That's none of that's going on. Um, the reason why you, you think that way is because you have the wonderful privilege of being able to think that way. You see, it can, it's an option for you. But for many people in the world, it's not an option. It's being imposed upon them. And globalism is a real danger because it, it goes lockstep in its actions to be... Uh, to control the people, to control the economy, to control uh, the masses. And it's normal for someone to say, oh my gosh, those, those people are Jack and Jan, or that, those people are conspirators, they're crazy. This is a conspiracy theory. It's Bible. Well, it's Revelation 13. Yeah. It's all outlined. If, if we were to tell you that there's, there's a man coming, and he's going, to, he's going to get people to follow him. And he's going to really rob everybody by simply demanding that they add a prefix, three-digit pre prefix to their identity number, to their social security number, or their euro number. And and he's going to control the world without any money, all numbers. You see, that's insane. You need to read Revelation chapter 13 because it's all right there. The good thing is, if you're a Christian, I would love some night we could have this out, is have a wonderful argument regarding why. It's a very rarely argued case. Why the rapture theologically must happen before the advent of the seven-year tribulation period. There, there are perfect theological argumentations why that must happen. And it comes all out of the Old Testament. And uh, people, you need to be encouraged by that. You need to be encouraged because yeah. there's, there's naysayers about oh, the rapture. Jack, there's we people were... saying, no, it's not going to happen. Yeah, well. well, I told you before, the next time you see somebody say that, you got to give them a hug. And, and shake their hand and tell them, man, I'm meeting somebody right now fulfilling Bible prophecy. Because yeah, the Bible it, says in the last yeah. days, there'll be people saying, he's not coming back. Well, the other thing, that is so true. But the other angle to that, Jack, is the attack. And I use that word intentionally. The attack, it's a satanic attack on the pre-trib rapture. It's, it's just gone ballistic and it's tragic because it's trying to rob us of our blessed hope. And when we start looking at some of these, the headlines that we look at, some of them are really troubling. I mean, uh, Middle East is a long, long ways away, but we bring some of these home here. Um, and, and we don't have that blessed hope. I mean, that's, that's stunning. I mean, mm. the, the whole passage of uh, the, he's going to descend and... and, and we're going to meet him in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord and comfort one another with these words. Yep. Tell me how you comfort one another with the fact that we're going to be dueling with the Antichrist. Not possible. But the attack, my only point is the attack on this pre-trib rapture is horrific right now. Not only that, I know we didn't plan on talking about this, but 
Not only that, but you guys, the tribulation saints, don't confuse them with the church. Right. Bible students, listen, there's the tribulation saints. They get saved during the tribulation. Okay, they're not the church. They're not included in the ranks of the church. They're believers. They're born again. But they're, listen, they're saved. They're born again. After the church is removed, John 14, 1, 2, and 3. Yes. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. By the way, each of the five chapters of 1 Thessalonians. But there's the Old Testament saints. Yes. They're not part of the church. David is not part of the church. Noah is not part of the church. Then there's the church age, which is Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down. And the rapture is when the Holy Spirit allows us up and meets Christ in the atmosphere. The church age, that's the bride of Christ. The Bible refers to this age you're living in as the bride of Christ, which is interesting because the Bible tells us in the book of Jeremiah that God the Father is married to Israel. The Bible tells us that the son is engaged to the church. Interesting. That seven-year period of time is specifically Jewish. It's Jewish in its Old Testament revelation. Listen, and it's Jewish when it's described in the New Testament revelation. Right. It's all Jewish. Tribulation is for the salvation of the Jewish nation. It has nothing to do with us. It's the Jews that the Holy Spirit comes upon. They preach the gospel. And John, looking down from heaven, says, I saw a number of people, so many people saved, nobody could number them. Out of the preaching of the Jewish evangelists, the 144,000, right? They're not Mormons. They're not Missouri Synod Lutherans. They're not, Jeho they're not even Southern Baptists. They're Jews. They're, they're Jews. Jews. The Bible tells you exactly, specifically, uh, the tribes that they're from, okay? And, um, but anyway, listen, it's very encouraging because uh, you and I, we're called to live for Christ, and we're called to look for him. And we're called to be ready, always ready, because the Bible teaches that at any time he could come for us. What's, what's wonderful about this is that we're called to live for him. The tribulation saints, they're not called to live for him, are they? Each and every tribulation believer is called to die for him. They will die. The Bible says power will be given to the Antichrist to slay all those who would not receive the mark of the beast or the number of the man, 666. And the Bible tells us that those saints, they receive white robes, those martyred saints. You're seeing the ones that die in the, uh, in the tribulation are given white robes. Did you know that nowhere, I can't find anywhere in the New Testament where the church is referred to as having white robes. Hmm. Did you know that? She's always seen in scripture with fine white linen, clean and bright. And it's mentioned in Revelation 19 that she is a bride adorned for her groom, the church, from every kindred, tribe, tongue and nation of people from the earth. That's the church. It's amazing. That's you if That's you're a you. believer, if you trust the Lord Jesus Christ. You guys, let's put a question up. How do I talk to my pastor about teaching about biblical? I do. <laughs> you know what? I would go to your pastor with a gift. I would go to your pastor with uh, the gift perhaps of Dr. John Wolverd. W-A-L-V-O-O-R-D, Dr. John Wolverd, with his book, um, The Prophecy Knowledge Handbook. It's about this big. It's the most exhaustive uh, executive work by the greatest eschatological scholar I think that's ever lived, Dr. John Wolverd. He's in heaven now. Yeah. Give your pastor that book as a gift and ask him, Pastor, I wish you would teach on Bible prophecy. And I got you this book. Could, could, you, look, could you look at it, please? Because you can't, find anybody, you can't find anybody more diplomatic than Dr. John Wolverd on introducing 
what that pastor you're referring to might think is But Jack, tough, I think this goes back things. to our opening discussion on Laodicea and that the church today has steered so far away from this topic, uh, partly because they want to grow the church and the church growth movement and everything. And so this, what we're talking about is deemed as all sorts of things, doom and gloom, it won't grow the church, it's not productive, it's controversial, it's divisive. And so the pastors, by and large, and I think Brent Miller, who's coming out here in the next two, oh, a couple weeks or so. I think Hawaii in February. I don't. Well, I'm, his film, uh, Before oh. the Wrath. You and I are in the film, Before the Wrath. Before the uh, Wrath. Uh, he, well, he spoke at my conference in September, gave a 20-minute presentation introducing Before the Wrath. You are, you're in it. In case you don't, didn't know, you're in it. I don't even remember. Amir is in it. J.D. Farag is in it. I say about three words in it. Um, anyway, he says 98% of the churches today will not talk about what we're talking about. 98%. That's um, a survey done by all oh, Lifeway and others looked into this and quizzed pastors. That's why you got so, this is, question. Isn't that funny, you guys? So pastors are afraid to talk about it because it might damage church growth. So yeah. look around. Yeah. <laughs> look around. You knew tonight was coming, and you could have stayed home. You came. But you know what? I think the last time Jan was here, when we did this, I think we had somewhere north of 500 or 600,000 views. That's just YouTube. Did you know that? Did you know a couple weeks ago, Don Stewart and I were here, right, together? Uh, Don just told me this uh, tonight, that we're, we passed... Uh, we're north of 300,000 views in two weeks. What does that mean? Yeah. It means that people are hungry for it because people don't get it. And, and they want to know. They, they want to have, know. they want to be taught, what does the whole Bible say? And so that's why we started these happening nows. But, so next question. What will we have to endure as Christians before the rapture takes place? Will we be where, will we be here when the Antichrist is revealed. No. Um, Jan, uh, uh, go ahead and answer. I mean, I got my answer, but I know that we have the same. Well, right, I mean, as we speak, what are we going to endure before the tribulation? As we speak, and we were talking behind the scenes back here, and Don is back there, that as we speak, 245 million Christians are being persecuted and or killed for their faith. Now, that is the wrath of man and the wrath of Satan. That's not the wrath of God. That happens in the tribulation. Mm. So, but God allows the wrath of man and the wrath of Satan to, to take place and it's intensifying and it's intensifying. And I, I was saying a few minutes ago, the spirit of Antichrist is raging around the world. There are demonstrations, anarchy, lawlessness in about 25 cities as we speak. So that happens before the rapture. After the rapture, well, that's all the book of Revelation. Can you imagine, too? And you know, I just... You can't find the church after Revelation 3. It's Chapter 4, verse 1 is yeah. the last possible thing we get, and that's even that's through it. John. Yeah. John says, I heard a voice saying to me, as it were a trumpet speaking, saying, come up here. Revelation 4, 1. You, she's never found again. Next time she's found, she's in Revelation 19 in heaven. How'd she get there? I find that significant. Listen to this. Are you guys ready for this? Listen. So the question was um, regarding the rapture. I guess I should say, the question was, what do I need to endure? Something like this, right? Can you guys put it back up? What do I need to endure as a Christian or something? First of all, we all must endure. Every one of us are to endure. Okay, we need to get that under our belt. We, are, we need to endure everything that the world throws at us. So just understand that. Because Christians are dying. You just mentioned that. 245 million in one year. They're dying. Well, they're persecuted. They're not persecuted. all dying. They're not all dying. They're persecuted. They're but persecuted. There's, there's somewhere two to 300,000 a year are killed. According to Open Doors Ministries. But here's the thing. Is we are... We, you, we need to know this, that martyrdom has happened in the church since the church was born, since 
James, okay? Don't think for a moment, look, Jesus could come back right now, okay? That's a fact. He could come back tonight. If he doesn't come back and pandemonium breaks loose in America and people are targeting Christians, well, my goodness, they're targeting Jews now. What if they decide to start targeting Christians? And it really begins to get unhooked, unhinged. If you don't know your theology, you're going to say, wait a minute, I thought Jesus was going to come back before this. Well, what about the believers in North Korea? It didn't happen for them. Are you with me? You've got to endure until he does come. Don't confuse enduring hardship and persecution with the tribulation period. The church must suffer persecution. It has for 2,000 years. It's coming to us. The seven-year tribulation period is the wrath of God coming upon a Christ-rejecting world. So listen to this. 1 Thessalonians 5. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Listen, don't answer anyone out loud. Comes as a thief in the night to who? To you? Listen carefully. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them. As labor pains upon a pregnant woman, they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness so that that day should overtake you as a thief, we are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the dark nor of the night, uh, of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep and he's talking about spiritual sleep. God help us with our sleep. Physical yeah. sleep, you need. I need. Yeah. Spiritual sleep, sleep at the night. Those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But let us who are of the day put on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we live or die, that we should live together with him. So whatever's coming to the world regarding this, these events, we're ready. We're ready both to die for him now but we're also ready to live for him at his coming if it's next week. That's what this, that's simple Bible teaching. Um, but, but Jack, Jack, the wrath during the tribulation is so grievous it's, that if anyone, even tonight, yeah. we want you to escape. It's so simple. Oh. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and, and escape. Escape the things to come. And, in, and w when that is all happening on earth, and again, it's, it's just unspeakable. The seals, the trumpets, the bulls, we're enjoying heaven. Now, in the meantime, you know, let's be winning the loss and causing as many to escape here as possible. Um, so I mean, that's, the, that's the essence. That's, that's true. That's the essence of end times. It's not looking necessarily at signs and, and all the things and connecting the dots. Yep. That's all important. I think that we be aware of, of the things that the Lord is showing yep. us, but ultimately it's to warn the lost, uh, the lost, warn the lost that you can escape all of this, the wrath to come. The wrath to come is the tribulation and that's what the believer escapes. And if you aren't sure of that, Please don't leave tonight until you yeah. are sure. You know what she's saying is true, and I'll prove it to you in a second. Whenever there is a catastrophic event, where, where does the world, at least, at least America, at least I, I can talk, can't talk for Europe, but for the US, when there's an event that takes place that rattles the American, they have enough Judeo-Christian understanding, they run to church. Yes. It's a very rare thing in the world. Yes. I've told you guys before. My European friends tell me when they have, a, when they have their 9-11 type events or when they have an earthquake or when they have something come down, they all run to the pub and get drunk. And I'm not joking. I've had Christians tell me, you know what we do? You guys are amazing in California or in America. You guys have an event like a 9-11, you all run to church. Yeah. We have an event, we all run to, to the bars and get drunk. 
but they only run to church for a short season. Then they forget, and then they go back. So you, you might say, oh, you, you pre-tribulation rapture people, you just want to escape. You just want to escape. Bet. Let me read. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> right here. <laughs> Listen to this. Listen to this. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that are coming upon the earth to stand before the Son of Man. Luke 21, 36. Jesus used the word escape, escape yeah. the wrath. Flee from the wrath that's coming. Next question. Do you think that the extreme hate for President Trump is due to him defending Christianity? No. I know that there are political and other reasons also, but do you think that's the dominant underlying reason why he's so hated and attacked by those on the left? I do not believe that, although that's a factor. It's a factor. Okay, it's a factor, but it's not the factor. I actually know what the factor is, 100%. It's not his hair. <laughs> it's not his money. It's his policies. And number one policy that causes him to be hated from people who don't even know, they absolutely hate him because he's the most pro-life power broker the nation has ever seen. Satan, Satan, I talked about it on Sunday, Satan's number one area throughout all of Israel's history and what all the pagan worship systems of the world have in common is human sacrifice and child sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump has come along and said, I don't believe in that stuff and we're gonna stop it. And so he's hated for that. And the, that his, the, 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 the feminism movement hates him because it, it's not the feminism movement, it's the fact that the feminists feel attacked by his pro-life view. The many billion dollar industries hate him because his pro-life view directly affects their money making. I was at a Vons supermarket yesterday and a man was standing out in front of the store asking for me to sign a petition. I said, what is it? He said, it's for advancing stem cell research. I said, explain it. He said, what? I said, explain stem cell research that you want me to support. He said, well, when an umbilical cord is discarded, it can be used for medical purposes and an aborted child. And I said, what happens when you get uh, stem cells injected into you from, from, uh, from somebody else? He said, well, I've heard rumors that you get tumors. I go, you get tons of tumors. <laughs> Do you know you don't get any tumors when you get your own stem cells injected into you? And I said, you said aborted children? I said, dude, come on. And he, he, said, he was a handsome, young, beautiful <laughs> black man. And I said, brother, listen, abortions. Abortions, predominantly pioneered by Democrats and their party and Planned Parenthood. And he goes, man, you're right, but I'm being paid to stand out here right now and do this. Mm -hmm. I said, that's your problem, see ya. <laughs> but it was all true. Donald Trump is hated. Yeah, you know what? Uh, the globalist, America first. Yeah, Globalism, America first. they hate him. But uh, the hatred, hatred for Israel. Uh, but I believe satanically, uh, it's the unborn child. Satan is losing uh, this battle regarding abortion in America. Praise God for that. So anyway, yeah. next question. The church, the church I have gone to for several years is changing Directions. They are headed toward NAR. Oh, no. Oh, you need to. Okay, this is a <laughs> Thanks. Ideas. <laughs> I need uh, to. And workshops are being held. Mystical realm workshops. Wow, really? What should I say to people that really love this church and don't seem to see where they are heading? Jan. Thanks. <laughs> no, no. The, I told you in the introduction, this is her, this is where she has well, her the, pulse finger. NAR. This in parentheses, New Apostolic Reformation. We actually talked about this last year right here, and I referenced my deep concern for the rise of this, which is the headquarters. I'm going to show a clip of it. 
on Saturday. Everything on Saturday will be posted on YouTube eventually. I'm going to show a clip of the chaos of, of Bethel Church, Redding, California. Complete yeah. chaos. It, and it's not... <laughs> Is God is chaos of God? Did did no. you guys hear the name Bethel Church in Reading? Yes. And this New Apostolic Reformation. Then they have a whole belief system, Seven Mountain Mandate. They believe they're going to bring heaven to earth. We're going to heaven comes to earth when Jesus Christ returns in the second coming, and we come with him. That's when heaven comes to earth, not before. These folks believe otherwise, but. There's also complete chaos going on. Now, right before Christmas, they tried to raise the dead, um, this little two-year-old, Olive. And uh, she, How many of you saw that in the news? Anybody raise your hands? I mean, it made headline news all around, around the, the world. world. All around the world. And it was heartbreaking. And they were, they were doing special services right before Christmas. Olive come forth, come forth from the morgue. She, they put her in the morgue for a week. <laughs> believing she would raise, rise up and, I guess, come forth from the morgue. It, it's a terrible abuse to the little two-year-old, to the parents, though it was the parents' idea. Um, and what they believe is that... But it came that, out of what they were taught. It's come, what they're the parents' taught, idea, but it came out of what they were what taught. What they're taught is that they can, the New Apostolic Reformation can do all that the apostles of old, apostles and prophets could do, and that they are now the new apostles and prophets. Now, now look, I, I get emails from a good Assembly of God people who say, Jan, please expose this, because we're Charismatics and Pentecostals, and we don't go along with yeah. this, this kind, of, uh, kind of craziness, which, again, I'm going to show a clip of, because you really have to see it to believe it. You really do. But <laughs> or, here's or the thing. Here's the that. thing. This is the fastest growing denomination in the world. Is fastest that right? growing denomination in the world is the New Apostolic Reformation. Wow. And, and C. Peter Wagner gave the title, I believe, about 1970, he gave it a, a name. And uh, now there's tons of apostles and prophets, self declared apostles and prophets, who are trying to do what they did you know, 2,000 years ago. But in the process, all I'm saying, is in the process, there's some terrible, terrible destruction going on. I, look, I did a radio program. Um, try to, if you can look up Understanding the Times Radio, watch it on YouTube. He's one of my favorite guests right here. Thank you, Jim. Oh, you are, because you're articulate and you tell it like it is, and you don't mince words, and that's what, we don't have time to mince words. <laughs> we don't have time, we don't have time. I did a radio program two weeks featuring a couple. They happened to be from Minneapolis. And, and their daughter, Caitlin, was, well, she went voluntarily to Bethel Redding. She was uh, given, it's called Sozo Counseling, where they programmed her to believe that her parents abused her. I know the parents, they didn't abuse her, okay? But she believed it through this counseling, and to this day, that's 10 years ago, they lost Caitlin 10 years ago. And, and that's what they're doing, is they're doing some unhealthy things that aren't of God. Okay, it's not of God to take a daughter who was 20 then, now she's 30, I, I believe, to take a daughter and ostracize her from the family and, and convince this little, this 20-year-old, this now a little older, that the parents abused her. And so when the parents would come visit her at Bethel, the girl would take off and run, terrified of this wonderful couple that I know. So I did two weeks on air. Do you know? Do you know that this couple heard from like-minded parents all yeah. around the world? Yeah. All around the world had the same experience. This is of God. This is New Apostolic Reformation. Now, I'm getting myself in huge trouble because I'm being pretty blunt. But is this of God? I, do, I believe it is not of God. Well, just, I do not and believe. I don't encourage anyone to listen to the teaching that comes out of that movement. Do not, unless you're really grounded. Uh, but it is, it's exactly what we're talking about on Sundays. It's exactly, yeah, exactly. It's exactly what Peter was saying. And the result, remember the result, or we'll study it soon. The result is that they, the people who observe these, this craziness, the world winds up blaspheming the God 
of salvation because of their exactly. antics. And that's, that's what you see. It's an embarrassment. It's, an embar it's embarrassing God. If you it's, ever saw it, you'd understand. It's, it's a, so, um, you can YouTube all of this. You can just go into YouTube and type these things in and you can watch the images and it's truly shocking. And it's anti apostasy. If, if I'm sure there's more questions, but maybe can someone very quickly before we go to the next one, we're out of time. But does anyone have another question regarding NAR, N A R, New Apostolic Reformation? Does anybody have a question that they can shout out clearly and quickly if you have a question regarding NAR? Their music oh. is. There, listen, this, thank you for the question. Yeah, thank you. Because for the now I don't know, I have a. I have a great uh, handicap because of, for this reason. She mentions the music. Let me back way up. There was, way back when, you guys, um, a movement that broke away from Calvary Chapel called the Vineyard Movement with John Wimber. And they created vineyard music. And it was amazing. Amazing music, very great music. Then there were um, others, and, and then I'll just throw them in. There's, for example, there's teaching that goes on at Hillsong that is horrific, horrific. and dangerous. Horrific. Dangerous and, her and horrific. Great music. Um, I could go down the list. St strange that strange ministries that are out there in, in some areas, clear violation of scripture with really great music. But I'm driving along singing the songs, not knowing that the founders of all this music is white. Does it offend me, the song? No, because I know what the word the means and holy and Jesus and God. And so I'm driving along and I've been blessed by music that later on I found out was written by somebody who goes to Bethel. It's putting, the church is doing this, playing it, really putting their stamp of approval on New Apostolic Reformation. And if you really want to do that, pastors, I, and I think all some of us are saying is, why don't you look at the words of the, look at the authors of the music, uh, look at the theology. I just did two weeks on air. It's on my website, it's on YouTube. Two weeks on air on the worship wars and this was kind of the essence of it, is pastors, can we really excuse, not only when it's coming from the sources that we're talking about, but the theology, even how about the lifestyles? What if the, what if the author of some of the music, um, Ray Boltz, for instance, homosexual, I mean, but we're singing it in church? So I think we gotta look at, at, at the music in the church and look at the words, look at the theology. Is it promoting kingdom now? We're gonna bring heaven to earth. It, much of the Bethel music, not all, some of it's beautiful, but some of the Bethel music, Hillsong music is gonna talk about we're, gonna, we're bringing heaven to earth. Or Jesus, he, he left heaven because he was lonely for us up there and he came down because he wanted to be with us. Well, that's horrible theology. That's horrible theology. But we're singing it every Sunday in church. You guys remember, yeah. Pastor Chuck, there's a song that's, it might still be popular to, among some ages today, but uh, it's an old song and it goes something to the effect, um, oh, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Um, how's that song go? Anybody remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember that song, Marcel? Yes. Um, it's a great song. It's, it's been around forever. But it basically comes out of, it's, well, not basically, it comes out of the book of Psalms. It comes out of David's experience when he cries out, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. We would sing it at Calvary, and it might have been even written by somebody at Calvary, and Chuck Smith would every time say, that's not a biblical song. <laughs> so well, wait a minute, David wrote it. It's not biblical today. Listen. David wrote it, but it's not biblical today. Do you know why it's not biblical today? Yeah. It's because he will not take his Holy Spirit right. from you today. In the Old Testament, he did. He came and he left. He didn't indwell people. He only came upon people. Only in the church age does the Holy Spirit come and reside in people. 
And Pastor Chuck Smith would always say, that's not, that's not biblical because he's not leaving me. And that's a sweet, that's sweetly true. Final question real quick. We got to end with this one. Why do American Jews keep voting? Why? Well. Strong delusion. Yeah, strong delusion. Um, they do love. Remarkable. They love liberalism. Some of them come from their ancestors, their parents, grandparents came from socialist countries. They only know socialism. But here's, I think, the biggest reason. I, I, look, I ask my Jewish relatives, you know, why do you forever and ever and ever and ever, going back to Hubert Humphrey and maybe even before that, you always vote Democrat. And they would tell me that we have to stand up for the little person. We, we can't be a part of this big corporate, even though they maybe had corporations, but they've been taught, just look, evangelicals have been taught, we have to stand up for righteous values, um, biblical worldview. Jewish people have been taught, we have been persecuted, we are going to stand for those, the minorities. So, so the we're minorities. gonna vote, yeah, we're gonna vote for the team that keeps the people that serve them exactly. in bondage. Exactly, And um, is it funny, we came out of bondage, out of, Egypt. Yeah, out of Egypt, but we vote for people who keep people in bondage and on a welfare system. And what's tragic about that, that, that question is asked a million times a day. Yes, yes. It never gets a good answer. Uh, and when you do ask a Jewish person, why are you voting like this? Uh, you're not gonna get a, a, a logical answer. They're genius, brilliant people, a lot of them are atheistic Jews, a lot of them are and Jews. And that's part of the problem. And they do not believe in God. But see, if they do believe in God, then they're, they're, they're moving to the center. They're moving to the center big time. I think you're gonna see them probably vote for Donald Trump. I mean, they're looking at the circus going on and they're smart enough to know but, it's a circus. Jan, I hope you're right, but do you know how many Jews in America got angry at Donald Trump for moving the embassy to Jerusalem? Well, they're, that's delusion Furious. again. It's delusion. Isn't it amazing? A friend of mine, uh, Moshe Levy, we were, he wanted to see Hollywood. I said, you don't, you don't want to see Hollywood. <laughs> no, we get this all the time. People come to town, oh, we want to see Hollywood. Oh, no, no, you don't want to see, I want to see Hollywood. So we go <laughs> and all of this, you know, and it's, and, and we're walking. We've heard of Rodeo Drive. Okay. So we park and we're walking down Rodeo Drive and he stops, classic line. Everybody's Jewish. <laughs> and Moshe looks around and he says, now I see why these people stay here. Now I get it. These Jews, to them, this is the promised land. Yeah, it is. And it's true. Jews in America, very few of them have a love for Israel. No, Very don't. few of them no. have a love for the physical land of Israel. I mean, I can tell you right now, uh, Dennis Prager loves the land and loves the Jew. He's, a, he's an oddity, he's a rarity. Not all Jews are like him. And so, um, yeah, you know what? Take your Jewish friends to the platforms, the party platforms, have them read it. It doesn't take long, it's online. We're even gonna be handing them out to you in, yeah. in, in uh, 2020's, uh, you know, late summer months, we'll be giving you the platforms. And you ask yourself, we'll ask as well, which one's closest to the honoring of God? And, and which but one's closest you vote accordingly? Remember the Jews, I mean, in their defense, they have been blinded by God for a purpose. Um, the that blinders so come true. off, the blinders come off during the tribulation. That and one third of them get saved during the tribulation. That's when the blinders come off and they can see. But right now, there's a remnant. I have saved Jewish relatives. Many of them have passed away now. Um, but I, I still have some that are left. By and large, they have been blinded by God. It's something I don't fully understand, never will. But you need to take that in consideration. Awesome. And I think that drifts over into the political world as well. Uh, when we talk about the blindness. That is so, we'll end with this. It is so excellent what she just said because the Bible tells us in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, he says that 
Now listen carefully. He said, to those who do not receive the gospel, that they do not believe, Satan has blinded them so that they cannot believe. But then you come to Paul's letter in Romans about the Jew. Did you know that Satan, if you look at the scripture and take it exactly as it said, says, Satan has blinded the eyes and the minds of the Gentile world. The Bible says God has blinded the minds of the Jew. That, that, you say, well, well, that's unfair. Can't Jews get saved? Of course they get yes. saved. There's Jews that are getting saved today. But as, as a nation goes, as a people, they're walking in a blindness that they're embracing and it's a, it's a blindness that God has given to them. The seven-year tribulation period, yeah. that all comes off. So you say, well, Jack, that didn't sound fair. Can a, if a Jew wants to accept Jesus today as Messiah, can he do that? Yes, of course he can. You understand that? If you're Jewish, it doesn't mean you're condemned. If you're here tonight or you're watching right now and you're Jewish and you say, wait a minute, I want, I want Jesus as my, my Messiah. That means God is lifting the veil from your eyes Amen. and you receive him right now, okay? And, and you go to him. Go to John chapter three. John, how do you say, uh, Yohanin, is that right? Go to Yohanin chapter three if you're Jewish and read how a Jew gets to heaven. Jesus tells Nicodemus, a Jew, how to get to heaven. Hey, thanks for watching Real Life YouTube channel. And if this message has been a blessing to you, then just click the subscribe button because we'd love to keep you up to date on what we're teaching on and what's coming next. And if you'd like to help us increase our reach in getting out these messages to a greater audience, then you can help support us by becoming a partner by simply clicking on the link in the description box below. So listen, we want to thank you for helping us get the word of God out to the ends of the earth.